Hello crafty friends, it's Jess from JessCrafts.com and today I'm here with a five cards, one stamp set video. This does feature Cat Scrappiness and I am on the Cat Scrappiness design team, but this isn't one of my design team videos. I just wanted to use the stamp set and you know, it worked out well for the style of video I was going for. So I'm going to make five cards with this stamp set and so to start, I'm gonna color five images from this stamp set. I stamped all the images from the set on a single piece of cardstock and I just picked the one that I prefer to do my Copic coloring on which is Michael's Recollection 110 pound cardstock. It may not be like the best Copic cardstock but it's what I'm used to and so it works well for me. For these sushi rolls from the Walk On stamp set, I have W5, W7, and W9 for the black and once I picked that for the black, I did use it on all the different like black parts of the different sushi. So every time I colored one of the rolls, I you know used the same combination or when I added some detail to, um, there's like one with a little like black strap around it, it's the same colors. And so the idea today was to be able to make a bunch of cards in one session, you know, and the, one of the time-saving things I like to do is when I pick a color of marker, I want to use it multiple times. So this E9597 combo here, I'm going to use, and I did use it on that other one to the left there that I've already colored, and I believe I also got E93, so 93, 95, 97 all together. And so like all the pink parts of the sushi and the pink cheeks are all just going to be from those same. So even though it's an E marker, which is technically a brown, it is a nice light pink. It has a sort of fishy salmon color that worked out well. And I picked the YG25. And um, when I do, oh, I think I only have the little details of green there. So they're all the same. It's just the YG25. So yeah, just picking a few markers and using them repeatedly when you're coloring a bunch of images can really save you a lot of time in my experience and makes it easier to do like these five cards in one sitting sort of thing. So I decided to cut out a like base for all of my designs using the Cat Scrappiness cross stitch rectangle. However, I do cut all of my white cardstock to five and a half by four and a quarter before and I store it that way just to make things a little bit easier and faster for me to work with. So when I cut out these cross stitch rectangles, I had all of these scraps and something that I've started doing recently, which you've probably heard me mention a few times on my channel by now, is that I like to attach all those scraps together and create my own foam dots or pop-up dots. Obviously they're made of paper, but like that would have been garbage and now well actually I would compost it but anyway instead of getting rid of it I am now making use of it and not getting any foam dots and spending money on those and instead I'm just using layers of cardstock to create some pop-up elements also the images in this stamp set one of the reasons I was so inspired to color it is they're easy to color and consequently because they're easy to color generally easy to cut like all the sizes are pretty large and so I fussy cut them all but to add a sort of like finishing detail to it I take a black marker and I just go around all the edges so if I made any small mistakes in my cutting it sort of takes care of that and makes it look a little bit smoother. I like to use like the large felt tip side of the marker to do that. With a lot of these cards I am going to do like a mix of colored images that I stamped and cut out there and I'll pop up with black and white images. And this is gonna allow me to use the stamp set a lot, like stamp it a lot without having to color every single image. And so I will get to use a variety and I'll you know ink up the stamp set a lot without coloring a lot. Not that I don't enjoy coloring, but if I were to color every single soy sauce bottle on this card or all of the sushi rolls on one of the upcoming cards, it would have taken a lot longer. And so creating that highlight image 
is a way to get more sort of like bang for your buck or um, to use a stamp set more. I also could have stamped these out and instead of like separately stamping, coloring, and cutting the focal image, I could have just directly colored the focal image on all of these cards. However, because I knew that overall they would be clean and simple cards, I felt like adding that little bit of extra interest by cutting them out and popping them up would just make the card a little bit more special. I am really taking advantage of this stamp positioning tool to allow me to create this design more easily and keep all of the soy sauce bottles like straight in the line. And so when I position the soy sauce bottle on my stamp positioner, I just kind of stamp one on each side of my focal image and I'm able to, because the stamp positioner tool has that clear cover, I'm able to kind of line things up a bit more. If you wanted to be a bit more precise, you could make sure that you shifted it over the same exact number of inches or quarters of an inch each time. But I found that eyeballing it was generally good enough to make it, to you know, create the design I wanted without being too fussy. So I knew that I wanted to do a black background for all of these because I thought that the black background would really help the sentiment and the black and white images pop. But when I looked at it sort of completed there, it just felt a little too simple. And so yes, I did pop up the image and that added a bit of interest. But another thing that I decided to do was to take one of my coordinating colors of Copic marker and just create a secondary mat. So there would be two mats under each one and that extra layer I think did the trick to add just a bit more interest. On my desk, I have a like large coffee mug that I like to stick all of my markers in until I'm done with a project. So, you know, when I picked out the sort of salmony pink colored markers and I colored that first image, I then put them in the cup so that next time I wanted something similar, they'd be right there. And so the same thing is happening now as I go and I say, okay, now I want to add this sort of background mat for each of them. All my markers are still in the cup and I can pull from them and I can, you know, if I'm smart and remember, write them down so I can tell you what colors I use for everything. I believe the R's are R27 and 29 if you're interested, but... Anyway, when I went to layer this all together, I thought, well, I'm using a lot of cardstock here. There's like, you know, three thick layers. However, I thought, well, I could reduce some of the bulk and save a bit by instead cutting out from the black mat. So like since it's going to be layered and covered, I took the cross stitched rectangle from Cat Scrappiness and I cut out a smaller rectangle from the inside of the black and then I can use that on another project but when you look at the finished layered card you would never know that I sort of saved a bit there and since I am using a nice thick black cardstock that's not super pricey because I don't like to spend a lot of money on cardstock but and you know a little more expensive I could have something for a different project so I'm just trying to throw in a couple of money saving type tips here or there just because I do as much as I love to buy craft goodies for myself I prefer not to spend money where I don't have to as I'm sure we all do more money for stamps more money for dyes more money for ink when we don't have to spend on those sort of things so the other additional benefit that I felt there was in stamping and coloring and cutting out my focal images is that I would need to use Copic Safe ink for that. But I wouldn't need to use Copic Safe ink for everything else. So Versafine is like my preferred black ink for getting a really like solid, nice impression 
with a stamp block. And it's not a Copic safe ink. So I knew that if I were trying to stamp everything in Copic safe ink, I would more likely be frustrated and I would more likely to not get like a really, really good image the first time. So with that in mind, I switched to VersaFine for all this extra stamping. And so here I'm just kind of stamping them all with stamp blocks. And as you can see, most of them are turning out pretty good. And so that's just kind of like another reason I chose to do it the way that I did. And with this one here, like I had created that sort of up and down look with the soy sauce bottles. And so to change things up rather than stamping in just a line across, I thought it would be fun to sort of stamp in all over pattern and create like my own pattern paper. However, I didn't plan it out ahead of time. So it's a little bit imperfect. At first I was doing like this really, you know, sort of neat symmetrical pattern where like it was like a sushi roll front facing and then side facing and I sw kept switching between the two sushi rolls and then when I got to the bottom my pattern didn't work out anymore because the sentiment was in the way but I just sort of improvised and I still think it turned out fine. I did stamp two like um, of the sushi rolls with the sentiment and one of them I'm going to use to create my simplest card, which is just the sentiment and the colored stamp. And then the other one, I, I did all that extra decorating in the back. Here, this idea is kind of similar to the soy sauce bottle, except for that I'm just stamping them all just straight down in a row. And so I changed the orientation of the card and I didn't you know, flip the image around. So while it's very similar, it's a little bit unique and that's what I was sort of going for in all these cards. I realized that they are not five ridiculously awesome unique cards. And so maybe that's what you were expecting when you said, I said five cards, one stamp set to show you like five different looks. But really my focus was more on like, how can you use a stamp set a good number of times in a single crafting session so that you felt like if you didn't pick up this stamp set for a couple months, you still really got your money's worth. And I think that while the walk-on stamp set from Cat Scrappiness worked out great for this, there's a lot of other Cat Scrappiness stamp sets that would work great and a lot of stuff in your stash that would work pretty similar. So um, I just, this was a new to me stamp set, so I was excited and eager to use it. So here are four of my cards and I will admit at this point I was kind of feeling like maybe I was running out of ideas a little bit and I was a bit concerned. I was like, uh, can I get one more card? And I thought, well, surely I can, like five cards, one stamp set sounds better than four cards, one stamp set. So I got to do this. I can do this. And I started originally thinking that... I would create another background like just with the piece of sushi. I, by the way, do not like fish and do not like sushi and do not eat sushi and do not know what any of the sushi is called. And so if I mess any of that up, I apologize. Or if any of my cards don't make any sense, like the sayings don't make sense. If you eat sushi, again, sorry, I just legitimately do not know much about it. So... I was like, well, I don't want to keep it like super, super simple like this. I should stamp a design with this sushi piece. However, I was like, well, I've already done a lot of these like stripe across. I could totally do that again, but it would basically be the same set or it's the same card. So I was like, how can I make it just a little bit different? This is a slightly different idea. And so I thought rather than just creating a pattern with the sushi I'd also create a pattern with the sentiment and so I made sure to stamp one complete sentiment where like you could read the whole thing in my sort of focal image and then the rest of them would all be kind of hanging off the page I also decided to stamp like hand stamp everything else rather than stamp it with the stamp positioning tool 
that may have created more like perfect lined up sentiments. I mean, my sentiments are definitely a little bit crooked here and there, probably a slightly more and less space between certain ones. I'm sure my sushi doesn't line up perfectly, but it's a handmade card and I actually thought it added a bit of interest and whimsy to it to not be too perfect. But I also don't know, like, if you're not the person making the card, maybe you don't even notice that. So I, you know, I knew where I wanted to put the final image. I'm going to pop all of these up with my homemade cheapskate pop tots and um, I do have to add adhesive to them. It's not quite as fast as like using store-bought pop-up dots, but another thing that I like about it is I can control how thick it is. So I can put like two layers of cardstock if I want just a bit of dimension or three or four layers if I really want it to pop. I can also create like layers, like I can pop up some things one, some things two, some things three layers high to create a bit more dimension in my scene. Now, I have done a few time-saving things here and there throughout. And then I'm ready to add my embellishments. And this is where things are going to like slow down quite a bit because I'm going to take my time and have fun picking out different jewels and sequins for my cards and attaching them all with glue dots, which also takes more time than I'd like it to. Um, you could also use multimedia matte, which is a little bit faster. I just found the glue, to glue dots tend, or like I think mine are technically zots, like little pieces of glue, whatever they are, tend to stick a little better. I'm going to generally either try to apply things in like straight lines or in visual triangles. So the first one I just did three jewels, three red jewels in a little line next to my sentiment. This time I'm creating a visual triangle. So if you connect all the groups of green, they will make a triangle. And odd things tend to look better. So instead of creating, you know, putting four jewels across the first one, I put three. And I've said this many times in my channel, but it's just like these little things that I learned in the first few years of crafting that I always apply again later in my crafting life. And the second one though, I used three groupings of two each. So it's six, which is an even number instead of an odd number, even though I just told you to use odd numbers, but because the groups are odd, like the number of groups, it tends to work out. So that's another way you can think about it. It doesn't always have to be like perfect, but also like the fact that my visual triangle, like what was in the center of my visual triangle was my sentiment. It drew your attention in theory, to that. And so that's what I'm going to kind of try to do throughout is like, I want your attention to go straight to my sentiment and my focal point image. I want to, part of the reason I'm adding this embellishment is to sort of refocus the eye towards those a bit. And, you know, these are relatively simple cards. So by adding a bit more interest to them, you know, like that extra layer, these sequins, it's, you know, kind of taking them to a next level in my opinion. So with that one, I added more sequins around the sentiment to draw extra attention to it. But then overall, I created five groupings of sequins. For this one, so sorry, I spent a lot of time picking out sequins and I think most of them, so like there was five cards four of them. There was four different types of sequins used. And like that took a lot of time. However, if you wanted to make it a bit quicker, I think the black cat scrappiness jewels would have matched everything. And so that's what I used on my last two cards. But if you had wanted to keep things quick, that would be my recommendation. Since I had all those black backgrounds, the black jewels just kind of make it easy. And that's kind of what I defaulted to here. At first, I thought about just putting the jewels right around my focal sentiment, but then there was only two, and I just didn't like the way that looked. So then I decided to put them in between each of the long sentiments, and then I was happy with that card. So that's it for my video today. If you like this video, if you want to see more like 
uh, you know, multiple cards, one stamp set. Please let me know if that's something that you're interested in. I'll try out some different kinds of videos. Um, and if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. I think I already said that. You can subscribe for more for my channel. There's going to be a coupon code in the video description. Um, for fun, if you want, let me know what your favorite card of the series was or if you have any suggestions or ideas of like what you like to do to make fast cards, please let me know. Thank you so much for watching. Have an awesome day. Bye.